Hello and welcome to SpecRite's webinar with Cal Poly San Luis Obispo on the outlook for 2018 where packaging meets technology. This is Adam Armstrong from SpecRite. Appreciate everybody joining the webinar. If you have any problems with audio or visual throughout, feel free to send a chat message in the menu on the right side. Also, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please do type those in to the questions section as well, and we will answer questions towards the end of our time. Uh, I'd like to introduce Brent Moore, the director of the Center for Packaging Value Chain at Cal Poly. Uh, Brent is a longtime veteran in the packaging industry, including procurement and packaging roles at Pharmavite and Mars, among others. Matthew Wright is our CEO here at SpecRite. Uh, he's also the founder of the company after 25 plus years in the packaging industry, uh, primarily on the, the paper side, and has been involved in technology for a while as well. Before I hand over the baton, a quick agenda. We'll kick off with how Cal Poly is positioning their packaging value chain center uh, for 2018 and the future. Then Matthew will jump in with the packaging trends that he sees coming in 2018 and how technology and specifically SpecRite can help with that. We'll then open it up for a, a Q&A session and finish out with a preview of our first annual user group uh, that's coming at the end of January in Austin, Texas. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Brent Moore. Thank you, Adam. Can you hear me okay? We can. Okay, great. So packaging is often thought of differently across functions in a business, as most of you on the phone probably know. All are important, and our center will cover all aspects of packaging. We're the only packaging program in a business school and we approach solutions in that way. This is how we're gonna be, begin to prepare to change with the future needs of packaging. So our center will focus on technical aspects of packaging, whether that's performance of materials, including moisture barriers or distribution. Um, we're gonna be able to do lean manufacturing trials and measure things such as OEE, change over times and the ability to have modular lines, and I'll show uh, a bit of that in a minute. We'll have a P&L balance sheet and an ROI calculation for each activity, which I think is very different than what you've seen um, in an approach to packaging before. We, oh, we flip back to the other page. Uh, thank you. We also have marketing and consumer valuation capabilities. We'll be able to incorporate graphic design and output on campus um, on demand. We have meeting space to conduct consumer trials, business meetings, review results. The thing is, is we'll be able to assess, change, and move forward on the spot. Overall, we will approach this in a multidisciplinary way, just as businesses do to be successful. Uh, we have a philosophy here of learn by doing, and that's exactly what we intend to do. The next slide. So here's some renderings. We actually used a uh, architecture student as part of me beginning to collaborate across the university. We used an architecture student to, to do some renderings on a, an existing building. This would be the outside of it as we see it. Next slide. Um, this is the inside lobby. So you see when you walk in, you have a piece of equipment there. We'll rotate equipment through for you know uh, talking points. We'll have a wall on the back that you see that will either feature um, uh, corporate messages or we'll have a history of packaging amongst different types of packaging formats. Up above uh, there's a giant collaboration space that you can switch to the next slide now as you go to the next slide we'll overlook the open shop floor. This is where we'll have modular packaging lines so we'll plan to do things as such as extrusion or even some small blow molding uh, but we'll have vertical form fill seal machines and other machines that we can wheel in and wheel out and test different type of packaging formats. Next slide, please. Um, we'll also be able to do the consumer evaluation. So we currently do some eye tracking amongst other things. We'll have a store shelf setting in the center and we will also have the 
uh, one-way focus group mirror sitting there that I think is very important and underutilized. Next slide. Um, we'll have a room, a digital design room, so we can take the, the concepts to design. We can actually make prototypes. We can put them in front of consumers or in front of a cross-functional business group, make decisions, make changes on the fly, redo them, and continue to prototype on site. All right. So collaboration space. This is what it's all about in my mind. So on the right, you see a picture of a, a pretty typical uh, space where you can collaborate from an office perspective or just discussion. On the left, we'll also have a collaboration space. That space overlooks the shop floor or that modular design floor, which will allow us to watch how products run, ideate not only about just packaging and how uh, it's functioning, but also how it runs on the line and do we want to modify the lines to to make it run more efficiently. So this is how um, I think we're approaching things from a collaborative perspective across the university. Um, I've been working with the graphic communication group, food science group, polymers and coatings, dairy and ag, and we'll leverage our co collective strength to better the packaging industry. Hey, Brent, it's uh, very exciting. I've, I've seen the journey and, and certainly very excited about what, what you guys are doing. What, what do you think would be the true benefits that companies will see from this value center? Well, uh, thanks for the question. I think it's a great question. Um, I think it's a total business approach that's different. Uh, we'll take a total business approach to applied research, so research that is industry relevant. Also, I think it's an opportunity to use the center as a remote site for business development, for testing, and for showcasing products, since we are the only one on the West Coast that will have a center. Yeah, I know. It's truly exciting. So, this is Matthew Wright with Specrite. You know, we continue, which ties into that, continue to see companies struggling uh, with SKU growth uh, and then ultimately the management of the SKU population and its growth. You know, our studies that we've done show there's 200 million uh, plus specs worldwide. We're seeing a growth rate of somewhere around 30 uh, to 35 percent a year of SKUs, uh, population growth with only about a 10% attrition rate, so a true net gain of about 20 to 22% of the SKU growth. So we're going to see that we're going to reach 300 million at some time in the very near future, as a packaging mark is predicting to hit near a trillion dollar industry uh, next year. So this is uh, creating a great challenge, and kind of the baseline of that challenge, albeit just an example, what's driving these uh, SKU proliferation or growth it's really multiple of different things. It may or may not affect all companies equally, but certainly we can go back not that far in time, uh, 5, 10, 15 years, depending on the industry. And you could really start out with one SKU and, and potentially go to 10 to 15X off that SKU. And that can be driven by different types of varieties. It can be driven by private label and the effect or impact of private labeling. Definitely driven by the retailer influence. And now I'd, I'd even add, obviously, as we've seen some of the articles that have just come out on Amazon's approach that e-com is going to have a huge impact into the SKU uh, world. And then ultimately globalization. Uh, that's had opportunity to, you know, once again, 10 to 20x uh, brand uh, challenges and managers of those specs uh, going forward. So with that as a backdrop to really what's what's created the opportunity and the need for technology in the specification market, what do we see going forward? And <clears throat> we're really in an interesting preview spot because we get to talk to a lot of companies in a lot of different industries and markets, and we really have an opportunity to look at it from a neutral perspective that we really are just here to help uh, create technology and tools that are helping manage these challenges going forward. And so the, the four top ones we've kind of heard and believe would be impactful in 2018 and, and onward would be continuing to try to manage and uh, uh, develop a way to consolidate SKUs uh, to try to augment or deal with this growth that we've talked about earlier. Almost everybody we talk to looks for that as being a great opportunity, both in, in terms of management and cost savings opportunities. Second one we see is, is obviously everybody speaks about this, but really a longing and a desire to try to look for alternative supply, uh, obviously to drive some level of green or sustainability, 
and just really how do you make those connections uh, going forward. We also see great uh, increased regulations that are coming to the food industry and other industries and actually starting now to uh, attach itself to the packaging and the logistics elements of these companies. And then lastly, uh, really a desire uh, to share, collaborate uh, data for leveraging and for power and, and different methods and different reasons, uh, but awareness that there's uh, some value in doing that together versus apart. So how do we see you know, our ability to help clients manage through this complexity and these growing trends uh, that we just spoke about? Well, we've already released what we call the Like Item Finder uh, and IQ, which are two tools that we have, but we're starting to, to really uh, reinvent them uh, to make them even stronger, uh, to allow them to help drive efficiencies and, and looking for ways uh, to do different types of search and different type of analysis and then be able to actually go in and make real time and live change to the data set so that we can drive SKU consolidation and, and therefore uh, try to help our clients reduce the number of SKUs that they're trying to manage and or not create new SKUs when new product opportunities arise. So I look for uh, a lot more development on our like item finder, uh, looking for new ways to do analysis, new types of products to do analysis against. As we go forward, we're working on some pretty interesting products uh, right now uh, to facilitate that. The next one would be the alternative supply opportunities. And right, I'm going to talk about this one in a two-step approach. Uh, one would be just a pure lookup system. You know, people are looking for alternative suppliers, maybe alternative locations. In our system today, we already have close to a thousand different supply locations. And so creating an easy lookup methodology if you want, maybe if uh, Google for packaging uh, that will link you into uh, known companies within the proximity based upon the commodity. But where I see this product going forward is actually starting to create a spec for the vendor community and, and the spec for our clients and then looking for those best option uh, lookup and partnering of specs. So a lot more opportunity on this product as we go forward. Uh, this will actually help drive uh, the speed of which opportunities of change are presented as sustainable options are presented, the ability to look those up and cross-reference them to like or op optional specs uh, will be out there. Regulations are something that, you know, there's two primary aspects of that. One is the ability to uh, make people feel confident that you have what you need. Uh, you have that in the methodology that will get you past uh, audits. Uh, will allow, whether it's the retail community or the government uh, authority, to feel comfortable that you're controlling and, and you're in charge of what you have. So our tools are really designed to kind of be proactive, uh, letting you know when stuff is coming due, uh, put it in a method that will easily be auditable uh, for whoever, whoever that third party is that wants to take preview of this. And I really see probably it's more of a 2019 trend where consumers are going to want to have some awareness of what's in your packaging that you have control of it. And so we're working on some tools to give uh, some future looks uh, for the outside world uh, in, once again, very myopic views. Uh, but to give people the comfortability that you really do have control and know what your point of origin is uh, and that you've passed audits through your product. And then lastly, really the exciting one, I believe, which is really coming into kind of an open sphere. We call it a global look, uh, which allows this trillion, trillion dollar industry or market, you know, 200 to 300 million specs uh, growing at a rapid pace, uh, allowing a common platform, common methodology, common languaging uh, for people to share uh, their information back and forth. Most people are very aware and very willing to kind of help uh, find best practices, best methodologies to manage this process. And it's very difficult when everybody's on different, uh, I would even call it different languages, different formats, different uh, ways to look at the data. It becomes impossible. But as the standardization starts to occur, great power starts to happen. And we've already started to see that where we've connected dots of vendors and clients uh, all using Specrite. And really their advantage is tremendous when it comes to the market and how they'll be able to take that efficiency to the market, both in terms of getting to the market faster and obviously reducing their cost as a, as a uniform entity. 
So we see this uh, continuing to evolve. It's really more of a late 18, 19 project uh, where you're actually going to be able to have uh, allowable data sharing as clients want to share data and want to use uh, open data. So that's what we we feel is pretty exciting. Uh, those are kind of the four top trends we're seeing right now, how we feel we're going to approach them and invest behind those trends to help our clients uh, obviously do better. Hey, hey, Matthew. Yes. Why do you think it's so hard for companies to do things like SKU consolidation and alternative product sourcing? Yeah, and no doubt, that's a great question, Brent. No doubt people are working on that. Uh, there's a lot of people, I'm sure, putting a lot of energy behind it. The challenge is that generally companies don't have a direct control of what I call the DNA level of data uh, to make this effective change. So really our job, we believe, is to help them focus on what kind of data they need, how they should organize that data uh, so that it can efficiently promote and actually proactively drive these goals and projects uh, to completion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matthew and Brent. Um, there are a couple questions that have come in. Uh, feel free to type in and send in any others. The the first is directed to you, Brent, and it's it's basically who's going to work on these projects? Um, how will the the research or projects be resourced? Oh, okay, great. Thanks for the question. Um, well, that's kind of two parts. So for the simpler projects, our passionate students will be paid to work and gain experience, but always under the supervision of myself or other professors that have a lot of experience. For more complex projects, our faculty be, will be used. Um, and our faculty have ex a lot of experience. So high barrier food and beverage, including microbiological expertise, consumer design, marketing of packaging, distribution expertise, um, and then CPG experience, um, whether that's food, beverage, nutrition, or pharmaceuticals, with all aspects of the supply chain covered. So it really is dependent upon the complexity of the project. Perfect. Thank you, Brent. Uh, and one that I think, Matthew, you're probably best to handle is, uh, can you elaborate on kind of what you mean about the, the marketplace? Uh, what do you envision there? Sure. Yeah. The market, and once again, as it's very dynamic moving forward, but we've we've literally listened to clients. That's how a lot of our products continue to get developed out, and not doing it in a vacuum of just what we think is necessary. But we've seen a great yearning or desire uh, from our clients to have kind of a an open field of ability to look up uh, certain data sets, uh, maybe what other people are doing, share their data uh, in terms of best practices, maybe materials. As maybe a source of supply, uh, and even ultimately perhaps uh, consolidating uh, op opportunities that they've seen be successful. And then lastly, uh, collaborating with other people perhaps to go to bid or go to market with their products. These are just things we're hearing. Uh, we believe because the way we've managed our data set and our stack and some of the global tools that we're developing as we speak, that we're going to be able to facilitate these for clients that desire to. There are obviously going to be clients that don't desire to participate in kind of an open marketplace uh, sharing and collaboration or might desire to, to share just parts of it, uh, but that's going to be enabled through our platform uh, to really allow this, this desire we're hearing from clients to share data sets together. Very exciting. And, and as somebody who talks with a lot of our, our current and potential customers, and this is definitely a, a point of excitement. Uh, there are a couple other questions coming in. Um, before I take those, I do just want to very quickly jump into the, the overview of the user group coming in January. Um, so I'm going to hop over there. So we are hosting our, our first annual user group with current and prospective Specrite customers at the end of January in Austin, Texas. And we're very excited about this opportunity um, as are the participant, participants that are joining so far. Uh, it's really an opportunity for current and potential Specrite users 
and members of the, the packaging industry in general, uh, professionals across procurement, quality, packaging engineering, to network with each other, uh, hear about and have direct impact on the Specrite product, and then learn how others are using the system, um, especially in, in new and different ways. Uh, Matthew will certainly be featured there, as will Brent's colleague, uh, Dr. Jay Singh, and then Jason Higby, who's the, the head of materials management and procurement at Grim White Farms, will be moderating. Um, he's been a longtime Specrite customer uh, and very experienced in the packaging industry. Uh, anything you want to elaborate on, Matthew? Yeah, I think it's it's worth noting. I'm very excited about our attendees, the caliper of the attendees, both from, I think, really high quality people that are going to uh, be great people to learn from and share, as well as interesting companies, uh, all the way from Fortune you know, 50 companies to, to smaller uh, companies. And it's really a discovery phase. Uh, we're doing this to learn, to share uh, some of our mainline tools, some of the off tools that we've developed for certain clients, and really a discovery process for them to understand that. Also, I look for it as a sharing uh, for companies to share their value chain challenges, uh, make sure that our roadmap aligns to these going forward. And this is, we're both seeing current clients sign up uh, and join us, and also people that are what I call in the discovery phase, which might be you know, three, six, 12 months out for making a decision of what they want to do, whether it's spec right or something else, but they're in a learning phase. And this is an opportunity for them to listen and kind of what other people's discovery phases have gone through. And then lastly, Austin is not a bad place to be. Uh, we want to kind of keep it low key and, and a great spot to, for everybody to collaborate together. Yeah, I think those are all great points and, and certainly we'll continue on the theme of today's call of kind of the intersection of packaging and technology. Uh, we we'll use the remaining time for, for questions. Brent, there was one more that came in for you that will the new center do any work on equipment improvement flexibility to allow some of these new SKUs to be produced without new separate assets? or will this work stay with the OEMs? Uh, great question. So um, our intent is to work with OEMs, and we've already had a few in um, within the nutrition, food, beverage, and pharmaceutical areas. They know that our intent is to uh, make the lines modular, and we want to work with them on ultimate flexibility. Uh, that's part of the design of our floor is is being modular and having the flexibility. I think we give them the avenue to help work with that. So we have every intention on working with the OEMs on trying to develop that where necessary. And we do have equipment abilities here at Cal Poly. We've built our own equipment before. We just don't have the ability to scale it. But we do have the knowledge to help influence, and that's what our intent is. Excellent. Thank you, Brent, and, and thank you for the question. Um, another one that, that came in for you, Matthew, is when you were talking about SKU consolidation and, and optimization, can you elaborate on IQ and what the vision is there? Sure. Yeah, I appreciate that uh, question. As I skipped over it, we just did a press release about IQ. You know, IQ is, and I wouldn't venture to say it's the first step uh, into AI, but it's the first step towards AI. And that's that's really where we're going to start using the data sets that we have and finding pro proactive ways to save money. You know, so often companies want to save money, but we're all busy. It's hard. It's hard to put your hands around that. And what I envision is a tool that will actually be pinging you with proactive ideas. And there's no doubt uh, that not all of them will be appropriate. Maybe not all of them will be fitting, but some of them will be. And some will be worth exploring and allow companies to jump in at kind of an exploratory level versus a research level. And so IQ, well, we've we've done some beta testing for a couple of clients and they've found some significant savings opportunities quickly. Uh, so they've been very proactive. We're going to talk a lot about that at the user group as we're really using the user group kind of as a kickoff for IQ. Uh, but I tell you, IQ is going to continue to morph and go forward, uh, include more and more commodities or products in it. And once again, proactively give companies opportunity to save money uh, without trying to figure that out for themselves. Excellent. Um, one more for you, Matthew, is coming from uh, the the supplier 
world, um, how do you see acceptance of tools like Specrite um, and kind of, you know, advanced sharing and, and software uh, when it comes to reaction from the, the packaging vendor community? That's a great question. Uh, and I would say we spend a, a disproportionate amount of time uh, I would call educating vendors, uh, whether we're having live uh, meetings directly with them. Some of the major producers of packaging uh, is very aware of what we're doing. But we really look at it as it we're, we're a neutral zone. Uh, that All we're trying to do is use technology to bring efficiency to everybody in the chain. That includes vendors and clients. Uh, it was interesting in one client vendor meeting that we were in, kind of sharing the tool and how it works so both could be advantaged. The vendor quickly said this is going to be a great advantage for them. We've actually seen some vendors that are enabling the tool for their client base. Uh, they understand that technology is really a difference maker uh, for them. So uh, there will be no doubt, however, as I'm always a straight shooter, that there are some that, that look at it as, as adversarial, uh, perhaps that, that have really hold the keys to the kingdom for their clients. Uh, we're not looking to so disturb those relationships. We're just looking for ways to enhance and create effective ways for things to get better. Uh, so I'd say it's a, it's a mixed bag leaning towards the support of Specrite, primarily from the bigger companies uh, have really seen the value of what we're doing and, and engaging in kind of the learning process of what we're doing. Sounds good. Um, and thank you for that question as well. As we, as we wrap up here, Brent, I know that we have your email address listed there and, and certainly Anybody can go to the Cal Poly packaging website. Um, I guess if somebody wants to do work with you or, or answer more questions, uh, what's the best route? Yeah, the email is definitely the best route. Um, just send it along there. I'll, uh, I'll be checking it all throughout the holidays even. And uh, anything we can do to uh, engage industry and in whether it's just ideation or questions or um, indications where we think things are going, we would love to help. Excellent. Um, and for those that, that want to know more about Specrite or Pick Matthew's brain further, uh, feel free to reach out to him via email. Uh, you can, of course, get more information on Specrite on our website, um, as well as in the handouts in the menu on the right. Uh, we will send out the link for the user group for those that are interested in, in looking into it further as well as a recording of the webinar today uh, for anybody that missed pieces of it or want to share it with colleagues. Um, any closing uh, thoughts before we wrap it up, Matthew? No, we're on an exciting journey of, of moving packaging forward uh, and use of technology. And, and I'm always excited when people want to participate in that conversation, uh, never, never one to push uh, our agenda forward, rather a collaborative conversation about how the world looks in the future. So thanks to those that took the time to uh, join uh, Cal Poly and, and Specrite today. Yeah, 